Hello and welcome, I'm Johnny and you want a nice cutscene video on the background of your website. Everyone wants something cool for their hero section and putting a chill video there has been popular for quite a few years now. The latest trend is probably animations that give a stylized, romanticized look at using the product but I still get clients asking explicitly for video backgrounds, which makes sense, we are in the age of social media after all. It is also the age of being conscious about performance, about how much stuff we force our users to download, so we'll at least be avoiding GIFs today. GIFs are much easier to set up as backgrounds, but they also have much bigger file sizes for worse quality, so no thanks. We will be using the video element instead. We'll be utilizing vanilla HTML and CSS techniques, but we'll be implementing in Svelkit because I love Svelkit and Tailwind because I love triggering people who hate Tailwind. All right, so we want a nice big hero section right at the top of the page. It's going to have our video, but also on the foreground, our company name or motto or a call to action, a big button that has the user do something important. For our purposes, let's add a company name, let's put it in an H1, and a button. If the user clicks on one thing on this page, we want this to be it. We'll make this look nicer in a moment, but first, let's take over most of the user screen with our hero section. I'm going to add a bold background to highlight what we're doing. Our bold background starts as big as our section, which is as big as its contents. So to take 80% of the user's viewport, we can use the Tailwind class for setting an element's height with an arbitrary value, h dash brackets 80 vh. vh stands for viewport height. Now, in this particular website, our section is inside a flex container, so we need to specify that the section should never shrink with shrink dash zero, and only then the browser will actually respect exactly how tall we want this element. We may use different values here, we may go full screen, but I like leaving a little bit at the end there so the user gets a sneak peek of what's coming up if they were to keep scrolling. Let's make our section a flex container with a direction column, align items in the center horizontally with item center and vertically with justify center. All of this to center our text, bonus practice for our next front end interview which will inevitably ask us to center a div. Let's make our text bigger as well. Cool, we are at the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's get our eye cutscene video in the background of our section. Let's add a video element. You can see our ESLint accessibility rule immediately complains that uh, we haven't provided captions, but that's all right because we're gonna add the attribute muted. Our video should be without sound anyway, but muted also allows us to autoplay safely. Some browsers and plugins rightly block autoplay in unmuted video, so we need to be explicit and specify this is muted, and we're also going to loop. These are the important attributes, but we'll also be adding plays in line and disable picture in picture to hint to the browser we don't want full screen nor pip for this video. Sweet, time to add the sauce. We have a few options here, but we'll go for statically hosting our video. And with Zweltkit, this means we'll need to drop it in our static directory. So let's do the old drag and drop. And now we can add a source element, which will have a source src attribute pointing to the file we just drag and dropped. It will be at slash hero.pg.webm and we'll also specify its MIME type, its type video slash webm. And hey, we got a video playing, but it's not where we want it, for that we'll need some more style. Let's make our parent section a relative container, and let's add some classes to our video element. We want absolute positioning, we do want to specify full width and full height, and we also want to zoom in as needed to cover the whole container, we do that with the object fit styling property. We need to set that to cover. With Tailwind, we do all of that with object dash cover. Now the video covers everything we need, including the foreground elements we don't want to cover. So let's give it a minus 10 Z index with minus Z dash 10. But then what's out, our section's color background also stays in front of the video. No worries, we didn't really need this background anyway, so we can just remove it and everything works. Woo! It's even responsive. Wow. 
Now, we all know size does matter, but there is an interesting conflict of interest here. Videos usually look best when they're big, but performance is better when they're small. And some videos just compress better than others. This is a 480p video in the WebM format and it looks alright, but your mileage may vary. If there is lots of movement, lots of different scenes in colors, those are things that are harder to compress well. In any case, we ain't building Netflix here, so a way to hide that we've uploaded a smaller, more compressed video to save on bandwidth would be to apply a CSS filter or two. Blur is a good one, it can make a video look more intentionally artistic and less accidentally garbage. We could remove some saturation or we could also add or subtract brightness according to whether we're on light or dark mode. And if we mess with our text and call to action as well, we can have something that looks like this, or like this, or like this. As always, my examples are meant to reinforce the concept and leave you with a better idea of what you can do, not necessarily to blind you with groundbreaking design. All right, this was a fun styling break, but it's also important to provide more than one video source. Even today, not all browsers support WebM, but I think it would be well covered if we drag and drop an MP4 version and then add another source element, setting it up for that MP4 file. The browser will only try to fetch and play the first one it understands, so we're keeping WebM at the top, as it's more value for bandwidth than MP4. Almost all our users should be getting that WebM version, but there may be some iOS Safari strugglers that will actually ignore it and fetch our MP4 instead. Important thing is, no one will be getting a black box background, everyone will be getting our cool video. At this point, seeing we can have multiple sources, we may be tempted to have different videos for different viewports, for different orientations, but that just won't work with media queries, neither on the source element nor the video element. So for example, we can't have two video elements, one which stays hidden on mobile and one which stays hidden on desktop. The video just won't load for whichever gets a media query to apply a different display attribute. We can do some trickery with JavaScript to show a different video on a case-by-case -case basis, but I don't think it'd ever be worth it. Instead, it's better to keep that limitation in mind as well and try to have the right video for the job. We want a video that looks nice no matter how it gets cropped, that doesn't rely on crisp focus and doesn't have too many moving elements due to the compression concerns we mentioned earlier. Last thing that's borderline worth discussing is the poster attribute. We can provide an image here to show while the video is loading. It probably makes most sense to have this be the first frame of the video, so it will appear to start seamlessly when it eventually downloads. However, instead of giving the user one more thing to download, I'd rather try to fight for a smaller video. Using poster does make a difference to the user experience for longer videos, but at that point, we're looking at a much different usage of the video element. We probably want some controls, we wouldn't want to self-host that video, instead we'd be looking at providers such as Cloudinary or Max. It's a different story for a different video. For something more related to cool hero sections, check out this video on animations with Lori and YouTube things you're also going to enjoy this one. Thanks a bunch for watching, I'll see you around.